everyone, it's Professor Primerton. In this video, we're going to finish up our discussion on linear functions and slope. So if you remember from the previous video, we left off with graphing horizontal and vertical lines. We're going to recognize and use the general form of the equation of a line. We're going to identify intercepts from general form of an equation of a line, and then also model data with linear equations and make predictions. So let's start with the equation of a horizontal and vertical line. So we already know from the previous video, if a line is horizontal, it has zero slope. There is no vertical change between two points on the horizontal line. And we also know that a horizontal line is a function since it passes a vertical line test. So we can write the equation in slope intercept form as y equals mx plus b. But if the slope is zero, then it's zero times x, which just disappears. And so the equation of a horizontal line will always be y equals b where b is the y-intercept. So they will always be of this form, y equals b for horizontal lines. So a horizontal line is given by the equation of the form, y equals b, where b is the y-intercept of the line. And we also know that the slope of a horizontal line is zero. So let's look at the graph of a horizontal line. So we don't need to label the tick marks because we're just going to graph the line y equals b as a horizontal line. So this is a horizontal line and we're going to talk about all the properties involving its graph. Well, notice that the line is horizontal. It will never cross the x-axis, so there are no x-intercepts. But there will be one y-intercept and that's where the horizontal line will cross the vertical axis. So this is zero comma B or the Y intercept. And that's because the equation of the line is Y equals B. Or sometimes you might see the Y replaced with function notation because horizontal lines are functions. So it could be F of X equals B instead. And it's of this form because we know that linear equations can be written as y equals mx plus b, or f of x equals mx plus b, and the slope is zero, meaning that you'll have zero times x plus b, or f of x is just equal to b. So that's why a horizontal line is of this form. And we know that horizontal lines are functions because the horizontal line passes the vertical line test. So since horizontal lines are functions, we can write the equation using function notation, as I've just said before, as f of x equals b instead, which means another common way of referring to horizontal lines is that it's a linear function because it can be written in y equals mx plus b form, and these are called constant functions because the function is just equal to a constant. So now we're going to discover that the graph of an equation of the form x equals a is not actually a function. So notice that for any output value, your input is always a. So if you plug in x equals a always, the y value can be anything. So you'll have several output values for this one input value x equals a. So an equation x equals a is not a function since it fails the vertical line test. So let's talk about vertical lines next. A vertical line is given by the equation of the form x equals a, where the a is referring to the x-intercept of the vertical line. And we know that a vertical line has undefined slope. So let's talk about the graph of a vertical line next. So we know a vertical line is only going up and down so the graph will only cross the x-axis instead. And so this will be x equals a, and it refers to a vertical line instead. Notice that there are no y-intercepts because the graph will not cross the y-axis. But there is an x-intercept this time, and the x-intercept is referring to this number a. It's a comma zero. And 
again, notice that a vertical line would fail the vertical line test. I can draw a vertical line right on top of the vertical line's graph, and it will intersect infinitely many times. So this vertical line is not a function. Fails the vertical line test. So that means we cannot use y equals mx plus b to represent a vertical line. A vertical line has its own unique equation, and it's always x equals because the x value does not change. It's always x equals a. So in example 7, we're going to graph the equation x equals negative 8 and y equals 4 in the same rectangular coordinate system. So in other words, graph these two lines together. Plot and label at least two points on each line. Okay, so let's grab our straight edge. We're going to graph two separate lines and plot two points on each line. So this is going to be very quick because horizontal and vertical lines are extremely fast to graph. Let's start off with x equals negative 8. So what type of line is this x equals negative 8? Well, since the x values always stay the same, this must be a vertical line. And so we know that it will cross the x-axis at x equals negative 8. So here's my vertical line, x equals negative 8. Notice that there's no y-intercepts, but there is an x-intercept at negative 8, 0. And it has undefined slope. So I'm going to put tick marks in. Okay, so that takes care of the vertical line, x equals negative 8. Now let's talk about y equals 4. y equals 4 must be a horizontal line because the y value always stays 4. So find 4 on the vertical axis, and it will cross the y-axis at 4. So this is y equals 4. It's a horizontal line, and we know that horizontal lines are functions. They do pass the vertical line test. And so the slope of a horizontal line is 0. And so we know that the y-intercept is 0, 4, and there are no x-intercepts. So now we have the two lines plotted and graphed. It says plot and label at least two points on each line. Well, we have one point on each line. Let's see if we can find out another point on each line. Well, if it's a vertical line, I know that the x values must be negative 8 always. So negative 8, 1 should be a point on the vertical line as well. Or you can also have negative 8, comma, negative 4. I'm just making these points up. As long as the x value is negative 8, the y value can be anything. Same thing for the horizontal line. As long as the y value is 4, the x value can be anything. So negative 1, comma, 4. That's another point. Um, 6, comma, 4. That's another point. Let's see where these two lines intersect. So you have the vertical line, x equals negative 8 horizontal line y equals 4, where will these two lines intersect or cross one another? It's when the x value must be negative 8 and the y value must be 4. So it should be negative 8 comma 4 is the intersection point. So that finished up our discussion on horizontal and vertical lines. Now let's focus the last part of the section on the general form of the equation of a line. So we've talked about point-slope form of an equation of a line and slope-intercept form in the last video. We still have this last form, which is called general form. So notice that a vertical line, x equals a, you cannot write it as y equals mx plus b because it's not a function. The slope is undefined, and you need to know the slope is a real number to use slope-intercept form. Well, you can represent vertical lines, horizontal lines, or lines that are positive slope or negative slope if you use this equation. ax plus by plus c equals zero, and this is called general form of an equation of a line. The a is a number in front of the x, the b is a number in front of the y, and c is a number by itself. And the equation must be equal to zero to be called general form. 
So it turns out if you have the equation given in this form, you can find the slope and the y-intercept very quickly. So here's how. So the definition of general form says every single line, whether it's vertical line, horizontal line, positive slope or negative slope line, they can be written in general form ax plus by plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are real numbers. And the a and the b can't both be zero. Otherwise, you won't have any variables at all. So example eight, we're going to find the slope and the y-intercept if the equation is in general form, where it's 3x plus 6y minus 12 equals zero. It turns out that we've actually already done something similar to this earlier in the previous video. If you want to find slope and the y-intercept, you need to make sure that the y has been isolated or you've solved for y already so you can find slope-intercept form. So take the equation, 3x plus 6y subtract 12 equals zero. And we are going to solve the linear equation for y to find slope-intercept form. which is y equals to x plus b. Okay, so we've done this before. Make sure you isolate the term that has the y. So subtract 3x and also add 12 to, to the right side of the equation. Or notice that you can just subtract the 6y and it moves it away from the other two terms. So that's what I'm going to do. Subtract 6y to the right side of the equation. That way negative 6y is equal to 3x subtract 12. And now isolate the y by dividing both sides of the equation by negative 6. y equals 3 divided by negative 6x minus 12 divided by negative 6, which of course simplifies. y is equal to 3 divided by negative 6 is negative a half. Keep the x. And then negative 12 divided by negative 6 makes it positive 2. And so this is now in slope-intercept form. What is the slope? The slope is always the coefficient in front of the x when you have slope-intercept form. So it's negative a half. And the y-intercept is the constant term, which would be 0 comma 2, because the b is 2. Okay, so that's one advantage of actually using general form is that you can find the slope and the y-intercept by solving for y very quickly. Another advantage of using general form is that you can find intercepts, the x-intercept and the y-intercept, very quickly for the equation of a line. So if you want to find the x-intercept, here's how. You can take the equation, which is in general form, and replace the y variable with a zero. So if you're finding the x-intercept, the y value must be zero. And once you do that, the y will disappear because you're replacing it with a zero, and so now you can just solve for x. So whatever x turns out to be, that must be the x-intercept, and that is where you can plot a point so that you can graph the equation of a line. So if you want to find the y-intercept, do the complete opposite. The y-intercept is right on the y-axis, which is when x is equal to zero, and then you'll have your x term disappear, and so you can solve the equation for y instead. And then that will be the y-intercept. So if you plot the y-intercept and the x-intercept, keep in mind that you only need two points to graph a line, and those are the easiest two points you can find. So draw a line through the two points that are containing the intercepts, and then make sure that you have arrows at the ends of your line because the line will continue indefinitely in both directions. So let's finish up the section on, with example 9. We're going to graph a linear equation that is given in general form by finding the intercepts this time. So the equation is negative 4x plus 8y equals 12. Notice that this equation is not in general form yet. So if you want to make sure it's in general form, the equation must be equal to 0. So let's subtract 12 to the left side of the equation. So now the equation's in general form. Okay, so then the steps are, let's find the x-intercept first. If I want to find the x-intercept, 
I make the y value 0 in the equation. So negative 4x plus 8 times y, which is 0 now, subtract 12 equals 0. Well, 8 times 0 is 0, and so you'll have negative 4x subtract 12 equals 0. And so notice that you only have one variable remaining now, so you can solve for x. So solve this equation for x by adding 12 to both sides of the equation, and then dividing by negative 4. And so x must be negative 3. So that is your x-intercept. Negative 3 is the x-coordinate when the y-coordinate is 0. So there's one point on the graph. So now let's find the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. So take the original equation that's in general form, negative 4x plus 8y minus 12 equals 0. This time replace the x with a 0. So negative 4 times 0 plus 8 times y minus 12 equals 0. 4 times 0 is 0. So that's the advantage of actually using x equals 0 or y equals 0. One of the terms will disappear. And so you'll have 8y subtract 12 equals 0, which means 8y is equal to 12, or y is equal to 12 eighths when you divide both sides by 8, which will simplify to 3 halves. And so the y-intercept is 0 for the x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate is 3 halves. Or, if you want a graph, it's also 1 and a half, or 1.5. So we've just found the easiest two points that we need to graph. So let's graph this equation of a line by plotting just the x-intercept and the y-intercept. The x-intercept was negative 3, so it crosses the x-axis at negative 3, negative 3 comma 0, x-intercept, and the y-intercept is 0 comma 3 halves, or like I said, it's 0 and 1 and a half. So it crosses between 1 and 2, halfway between the two. So 0 comma 3 halves, and that's your y-intercept. And we don't need to calculate slope, we're asked to graph. So that's all we need, is just two points, and the line will extend indefinitely in both directions. So make sure you put arrows on the ends. And so this is the equation of negative 4x plus 8y minus 12 equals 0. All right, so let's do a summary of what we've learned from this section. There are several ideas that we've talked about in terms of equations of lines. So there was point-slope form. The name tells you exactly what you need to know before you can use it. You need to know a point on the line, and you need to know the slope of the line, and it's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and the x minus x1 is in parentheses. The slope-intercept form. Again, the name tells you what you need to know. The slope is m, you need to know that, and the y-intercept is known for the equation of the line. So then you can write the equation as y equals mx plus b. The m is the slope, and the b is the y-intercept. A horizontal line is a function, so you can use slope-intercept form, but keep in mind the horizontal line has slope 0, so 0 times x just disappears, and so it's y equals b. A vertical line is not a function, so it must be of the form x equals a, because the graph will cross the x-axis only. And we've just talked about general form. It's some number times x plus some number times y plus a constant term c, but the equation must be equal to 0. And it's useful for finding the slope and the y-intercept once you solve for y. And it's also useful to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept by plugging in x equals 0 to find the y-intercept or plugging in y equals 0 to find the x-intercept. And then you can plot two points and then graph. So this finished up our discussion on slope and equations of lines. If you have any questions about any of the examples, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about parallel and perpendicular lines and their slopes and also average rate of change.